All right, everyone, buckle up because today's deep dive is taking us straight into the wonderful world of movies. We're diving deep into La Pica de Rappel, which, and let me tell you, is not your average film blog. Oh, definitely not. This is the brainchild of Code Utah, who, from what I gather, is a true blue film enthusiast from France. If you're talking about someone with a deep, abiding love for cinema, that's Code Utah. One thing that really stood out to me was how personally they take it. I mean, they talk about their childhood Indiana Jones like it was yesterday. It's like those early cinematic experiences really leave their mark. You know, for Code Utah, Raiders of the Lost Ark was their gateway drug into this whole universe. It makes you think, right? Like, what was that one film that made you fall in love with movies? Yeah, for me, it was Star Wars. I mean, talk about epic storytelling, right? And for Code Utah, it seems like Raiders sparked this whole lifelong love affair with adventure, sci-fi, all that good stuff. Totally. And then, of course, Star Wars came along and just solidified it. I mean, you can practically see the impact those films had just reading through the blog. Absolutely. It's like, mm -hmm. did they ever go back and watch those old adventure serials that inspired Raiders? Mm -hmm. you know, the ones that got Spielberg hooked in the first place? Did they hold up? Who knows? It's like stepping into someone's personal film journal filled with all their passionate takes and hot takes and, you know, those little details that make you really think about why you connect with the film. Exactly. And that's what makes this deep dive so fascinating. It's raw, unfiltered, and it really makes you question your own relationship with film. Like what makes you tick as a viewer? What are those cinematic buttons that filmmakers push to get you invested? And you can tell Code Utah isn't afraid to go there. They lay it all out on the table, good, bad, and everything in between. It's refreshing, actually. It's honest, you know? Yeah. No pretense, just pure, unadulterated love for the art of filmmaking. Speaking of opinions, we gotta talk about Code Utah's taste in directors. Oh yeah, they've got a real eye for the heavy hitters. I mean, we're talking Spielberg. Tarantino, Shyamalan. It's like a who's who of cinematic titans. Right. And what's cool is how they pick up on those common threads, Yeah. you know? Like, these directors, they're not afraid to take risks to really push the boundaries of storytelling. No kidding. Like, Spielberg, the master of suspense. Think back to Jaws for a second. Oh, man. That shark, you swear it was real. So terrifying. And the way Spielberg builds that tension. Practically no on-screen violence for, like, half the movie. It's incredible. It's all about the atmosphere, the music, those little details that get under your skin. And Code Utah even mentions how Spielberg used practical effects so much, which, you know, they say adds this layer of realism that CGI sometimes just can't match. Absolutely. It makes those scenes feel so visceral, you know, mm -hmm. like you're right there in the thick of it. Totally. And then you've got Tarantino. Dialogue. That's his playground. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Those sharp, snappy exchanges, they just crackle with energy. And the way he weaves in all those homages to classic cinema, you never know when you're going to spot a hidden gem. It's like a treasure hunt for film buffs. <laughs> and speaking of mind bending, we got to talk Nolan. Oh, yeah. Code Utah is a huge fan. Actually, their blog has a whole section dedicated to Nolan's films, especially Tenet. Have you seen that one? I haven't had a chance yet. Oh, man, you gotta see it. It'll mess with your head in the best way possible. I've heard it's wild. It plays with time in such a unique way. It's like a puzzle box of a movie. Definitely one to check out if you like your films on the complex side. Noted. And I remember Code Utah talking about Dunkirk. How the sound design just puts you right there on those beaches. Oh, yeah. The intensity. The feeling of chaos, of claustrophobia. It's incredible. And of course, no discussion of visionary directors would be complete without Shyamalan, the king of the twist ending. Oh, absolutely. He's a master at crafting these intricate stories where nothing is quite as it seems. It's like he's playing chess with your mind, always one step ahead. Exactly. And Code Utah really responds to that. They appreciate filmmakers who take chances, who aren't afraid to subvert expectations. And it's not just about the visuals or the stories. Co Utah also has great taste in film scores, especially John Williams and Hans Zimmer. Legends. Their music is practically a character in itself, you know? Totally. Like, think about Star Wars. That score is instantly recognizable. It just transports you to a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. And Zimmer, he's the master of atmosphere. Oh, yeah, those big, epic soundscapes. But he can also do subtle and suspenseful just as well. Think about Inception. The way the music builds tension, it's masterful. Yeah, let's talk movies, the heart and soul of Code Utah's blog. Mm. And let me tell you, they've got an eye for a good story. Oh, absolutely. And their taste is all over the map in the best way possible. Okay, for instance, they recently reviewed Killers of the Flower Moon, which is, you know, Scorsese film. Right. 
But it's this historical crime drama set in the 1920s about the Osage Nation and all this oil wealth, and then these murders start happening. Yeah, and the FBI gets called in, trying to untangle this whole web of greed and corruption. And from what I gather, Code Utah was really impressed with how the film handled this true story. I mean, it's a heavy topic, right? It is, and they talk about how the film doesn't shy away from the tragedy, but it also highlights the strength and resilience of the Osage people. Yeah, it's like, how do you balance those things, you know? The darkness and the hope. Sounds like Scorsese found a way. Oh, absolutely. He's a master storyteller, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, switching gears completely to the creator, sci-fi thriller John David Washington battling rogue AI. What did Code Utah think of this one? Well, at first, it seems like your typical man versus machine kind of thing, right? But Code Utah digs a little deeper. I bet they did. They talk about how the film actually explores what it means to be human in a world that's becoming more and more dominated by technology. Ooh, okay, so it's got some philosophical weight to it. It seems like it. They even drew some parallels to classic sci-fi literature, which is always a good sign. Okay, so mark that one down, folks. Now, let me tell you about this next film, because the visuals alone, wow. We're talking Mystère of Anise. Okay, the one with Kenneth Branagh as Poirot. The one and only. Yeah. And this time, he's solving a murder against the backdrop of a masquerade ball in Venice. Talk about atmosphere. Right. Code Utah seemed particularly captivated by the setting, how they wove in those elements of Italian Gothic horror, you know, that sense of unease. Oh yeah, I can see that. It's like the city itself becomes a character in those kinds of films. Totally. And then get ready for this because we're going from a lavish ball to acid rain. Essay, a French film where you guessed it, the rain turns deadly. Oh wow, I'd heard of that one. It's supposed to be pretty intense. Yeah, Code Utah uses this film to talk about, well, climate change, really. How more and more films are using these kinds of apocalyptic scenarios to, I don't know, hold up a mirror to society. It's like, how do you even begin to process something as massive and complex as climate change? Yeah. Maybe through these kinds of stories, these what-if scenarios. Exactly. And it sounds like a side doesn't pull any punches. And to wrap things up, let's lighten the mood with a little comedy, shall we? Yannick. Ah. Yes, the one set in a theater, right? You got it. So it's about this play. And let's just say it's not going well. And then an audience member just takes over the whole thing. Oh, wow. That sounds like a recipe for disaster or maybe brilliance. Right. And it sounds like Code Utah leans towards brilliance on this one. They called it a love letter to the absurdity of life. It's amazing how these filmmakers keep finding new ways to surprise us, to make us think, to make us laugh. That's the magic of movies, isn't it? And honestly, we've just scratched the surface of what Code Utah covers on their blog. They've got thoughts on the film industry, musings on the future of cinema, even some personal reflections on their own journey as a film lover. It's inspiring, really. It reminds us that film isn't just entertainment. It's a reflection of who we are, what we value, what we fear. It's a powerful medium, no doubt about it. And Code Utah, they get it. They really get it. So if you're ready to dive into some thought-provoking, entertaining, and sometimes downright bizarre cinematic discussions, go check out La Piqueur de Rappel. You might just find your next favorite film or even rediscover your love for the ones you thought you knew by heart. Until next time, happy viewing, everyone.